You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. A very, very strange game to talk about. I don't know. I mean, this this podcast will probably be as messy as Villa's defence in that in that six minute period. Um, Manchester City three, Aston Villa two. After Villa leading two nil in the in the seventieth minute, um, we'll try and go through this as best we can in the next fifteen minutes or so. Ash, you're still there in the stadium with with some great music going on there. What was that like? That that six minute spell. First of all, let's just go straight to that. Just madness, man. I don't know, mate. It's just crazy what what went on there. Um, as soon as the first one went in, the momentum just shifted drastically. Uh, he sent a second one, was coming. The third one came soon after that, and just imploded, didn't they? I don't know. I mean, I mean, Rodgers' goal was tidy. The ball in for the third one, De Bruyne was, was very good. I mean, you can't defend that ball for me. The first one was a bit poor. Just Sterling hung it, uh, hung it up, and Cash got caught for that one. So. So yeah, I mean Gerard afterwards he, he wanted Villa to play, play a bit more, keep 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 the ball. Um it's easy said than done, isn't it? And Villa went into the protective shell he called it afterwards and um, yeah, I think we've been here before, haven't we? Villa have chucked away leads and, and whatnot, but to do it in this fashion today was just shocking to see really. Crazy what went on. Um so we were cruising, Coutinho score Villa were, we were very compact. Frustrating city. She, the Brony was shanking, shanking uh, shots off and looked comfortable. But uh, I think we missed too many chances today, Dan, for me. Watkins, I thought, get, when you come to play a slot, you've got to take them. And Watkins missed, missed, two, missed two good ones today. Um, so I missed big chances at good times. And yeah, just caught up short. Just really annoying more than anything. Spurs well, at home, similar, similar vein to that as well. If you're going to have chances against these big sides, you've got to take them. That's, I think it was that still zero points from the top five this season. So... You, you're writing off any points from 10 games a season there. So you've got to get all your other points in the other 28. So you, you're already setting yourself up for difficulties if you can't go and take a big result off, off one of these. Very worrying trend. Yeah, mentality needs to change next season big time. You can't be coming here and wilting and going into your shell. Have a bit, have a bit more about you. Yeah. I think Gerard looked to do that in the summer, recruitment-wise. Kamara was on his way, big game player. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic for the next season, though. Yeah, well, we've got our end of season review in, in the week coming up, so we'll kind of go into it in more detail there. I find Gerald's comments a little bit odd about kind of going a bit uh, into our shell kind of thing, as if almost like it wasn't his substitutions that did that. Like we brought on a defensive midfielder, which on you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You're trying to hold on to a 2 0 lead against top of the league. I understand that, that makes sense, but kind of all the impetus. Went went out of us taking Coutinho off. I felt that there was almost no threat with with him off the pitch, um, no kind of outlet for for City to worry about. And we kind of the Camber, yeah, he's not the best player in the world, but him kind of going, oh, you know, we almost couldn't play af- after that. Was like, was that was your decision, mate, to kind of make that, that substitution? I suppose his his argument would be, I still expect those players to be able to play football. You know, it's not like they, they part the bus, but that change killed it for me. That first change. Yeah, I mean. Oh, it's such a good thing, Dan. I mean, you're looking at it. Yeah, Coutinho, just, course, Coutinho just scored. You, yeah, I mean, he scored quite early. 56 minutes is the goal. Something like that. Quite early in the second half, I guess. And he, yeah, he changed his trade. So I, I think the Coutinho didn't start against Burnley, but um, it's. I mean, they're just tired minds, tired legs out there. They've played a lot of football the last few weeks. Man City's been a bit fresher. They've had a lot of time to prepare for this one. I think mean, that told in the end. I think Villa was spent. They really were. and... Yeah, the change, the camera bringing on, it made sense at the time, but looking back, you're backtracking there, you're asking for trouble, aren't you? Douglas, Douglas Louise struggled a little bit today, um, with that, with that, a, lot, a lot of change there, and keep the team on the pitch, I'm not sure, but there were a lot of tired bodies, tired minds out there, and it told in the end, City came on relentlessly, and um, yeah, De Bruyne really, De Bruyne really took it to Villa as well, and a bit of quality in good moments, and that's what Villa lacked today for me, uh, with the finishing, could have, could have been so much better. Well, yeah, they blow it up, don't they? So, shine. You'll, you'll be able to correct me on this because you'll know the, the 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 knowledge of it more so than me because my memory's terrible. The last time the camera coming on when we're leading Wolves at home two 0 and the camera comes on and we lose three two. Is that that correct? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, I mean, it's the total opposite <laughs> requirement, isn't it? You bring on a defensive midfielder to shore things up and you blow three goals. And I know Man City are a, a brilliant, brilliant side. There's kind of have to caveat everything we say with that, but. There's still a little part of me that's disappointed with the fact that we've thrown away a two-goal lead against whoever it is. There's still 20 minutes to go there. I expect a better, stronger mindset to, to be able to see that out. I don't know whether I'm being harsh against a really top side, but 
you two up, you, you know, see you're nervous after that. The fan, the fan base, I can feel it through through Sky. I imagine you can feel the same there that they know Liverpool are a goal away here. Well, they're losing at that point to so Liverpool are, 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 are champions with with what they're doing at the moment. You've got to kind of capitalise on that and, and see it through, and that's that's disappointing for me to, to not see that through, regardless of how good Man City are. The, the ball in for the, the third goal, I mean, I've seen it. Well, I've only seen it once. It's, it's, you can't defend that. You can't defend that ball. Back coming to back post. Got a banging going on. Can you hear the banging? But uh, oh, sorry, but uh, I think just yeah, City show, uh, City's quality show in the end. Simple as that, and I'm going to have a leg it, to be honest with you. And um, they should have better with the moments they had and they never had to get punished for that so that's what happened today let's talk about the first the first 70 minutes then because you know Gerald said the game plans work well the players have done everything they asked for and more and it was going well wasn't it I, I said in the week almost tongue in cheek on social media that I kind of fancied just to get something because I just thought you know the, the kind of narrative of it all for Villa to go and do something and, and upset the Tartar race I kind of thought you know what I fancy a bit of that I never would have suspected and nobody would that Villa would be 2-0 up with, with 20 minutes to go but it's the same same when we played them earlier on in the season until the the or, or last season whenever it was when that offside thing happened with Diaz and you know the rules change after it. We gave Man City a good game and I, I really thought we were we were worthy of all three points up until that point as well and and so like I say at least the draw. Yeah, totally. I think we're just short in certain areas of the pitch midfield for one. Um, seems to be coming on forward and it's good. So I said said just then we'll be better next season. So. Um, Recruitment's massive now for the summer, as we know, and I think that'll help. And the squad needs to improve to get better results. As simple as that. I know it's easy to say, but yeah, the way that way they wrote it today, it's just crazy. The scenes in here were just nuts, mate. Um, shocking over there as well. But the Villa fans, the Villa fans kept the call as well. To be honest with you, the city the city fans all ran in, all goaded the Villa fans as well. I've had messages off kids and kids and. Uh, parents saying they've got coin bottles thrown at them and all sorts and obviously Robin Olsen as well I've seen the video that's circulating now he got attacked a couple of times so yeah not on mate and that was pretty poor really what's going on yeah there's a couple of things I've seen on social media in, in two kind of veins really one in and more serious in obviously the Olsen stuff and the, the coin throwing which is as Roy Keane was saying they're just, they're just morons these people um, and the other side of it, like fans, Villa fans were on the trams and stuff back out of, out of the Etihad, back towards Manchester. And there's already Man City fans leaving before the trophy lift. And I always find that weird as well. Like these clubs so used to success that they don't even have to see the trophy being lifted anymore. But the pitch invasion side of it, I quite like a pitch invasion generally. A bit old school about it. I like seeing it. It's delirious, isn't it? Getting carried away. All good fun. Don't mind it. I've been in a couple myself with Villa at Villa Park. It was the West Brom semi-final. It's going back a few years. I can't remember that. That must have been the last one, to be honest. Um, there was no silliness, no coin throwing. Just on there, touch the grass, get off, go home, have a good time. And that's what it should be. You've just won the league. The last thought in any normal person's mind is I'm going to go and punch that professional football player or throw a coin into the crowd or throw a flare. Or It's bizarre. I don't understand it. It's scum. And hopefully Man City deal with it effectively. <laughs> Yeah, they've released a statement pretty sharp, which is, which is credit to them. Yeah, Gerard wasn't happy after Dan, for those that haven't seen. He said, Man City needs to look at this. It was, one of my players, got my goalkeeper got attacked. I think he's OK. That struck in the back of the head. And Gerard was far from happy with that. So, so yeah, something needs to change for next season because it's happening every other week now. So, yeah, just a sickening scene, really. And obviously the Villa fans in the corner got, got, got attacked as well. Some of them with the coins and whatnot. So, we don't want to be seeing that again. Bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Um, it kind of does feel a little bit futile to talk about the match specifics, really, just because it's the last game of the season and the, the collapse that happened. But Robin Olsen specifically, just while he is kind of talk of the town, a shaky start along with Chambers in the first five minutes or so. And I thought, well, th- this looks like a goalkeeper is not used to his defence and vice versa. And I thought, you yeah, know, here we go. I'm in for a shaky afternoon. And then pretty much after that, I thought Chambers was, was excellent for the rest of the first half. And yes, Robin Olsen is essentially a backup goalkeeper and he's not perfect. But I thought he was pretty good, really. He kind of claimed a few corners. I think he punched one. And I thought, yeah, you know what? And to be fair, up till the 70th minute, he's kept a clean sheet. And I'm thinking, yeah, you, you don't look bad here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, did he prove big time after that? Nervy start for him, shanking a few balls out to, for four ins and thinking, oh dear, we got um, Andy Moreira again. I don't remember him. But uh, now he improved. He's, he's had 50, 50 caps for Sweden. He's Sweden's number one. Then he's been around the block, played for Roma and 
Good work, Everton. So he's been around. Joe has been impressed with him beyond the scenes as well. I know he hasn't played in debut today, but beyond the scenes, Joe has been impressed with him. He wanted an experienced goalkeeper to come in in January. He got one in. I think they wanted to make it permanent as well. Neil Cutler's been impressed with him. I thought he did okay today. Improved massively. The goals weren't his fault, really. Rodgers was quality. And the two crosses at the back post. Defence needed to clear them. They didn't. And yeah, so he didn't do a fact that wrong, in all fairness. And, and yeah, he, he held his own out there. Playing some really good high balls. I would a few and yeah, I think Villa looks to make that deal permanent in the summer. It'd be good back back up. The Villa throws on three fronts next season, did okay, thirty two. And the general wants to raise the ice pole for the group and like also also be one of them to come in, I guess. Mm. Yeah, yeah, decent enough. Uh, you probably want a better competition for for Martinez in the long run, but goalkeeper is or backup goalkeeper is certainly not a priority. For me, this summer, there's lots of other things to fix first. So, yeah, Olsen, decent enough. Uh, Kamara, quick word on him. Gerald's mentioned saying, I think he just said, we've got an interest, which kind of tells me Gerald doesn't mention things unless it's kind of in the power plan at least. So, you expect that one to go through? Yeah, yeah, the 45 year deal. Gerald uh, was in Marseille a month ago alongside Perzo and Johan Langer. He was watching Marseille be 9 3 2. Three, two. Uh, Kamara's playing then. Kamara on his Instagram, I think he said, I'm leaving Marseille's contracts up. So he's announced it already, but yeah, in terms of the Villa announcement, that that'll be surely this week, you suspect. Um, free transfer, yeah, his contract's with Marseille. He's not renewing, and obviously reports come out today, five-year deal at Villa Park. Gerard has a massive, a massive say with this one as well, so Gerard's pulling power has come into, into effect again. And he logs, logs a lot, lot logs. I haven't seen too much of him, Dan, I don't know yourself, but I spoke to a few people today, very very defensive-minded, defend, logs to defend. Not a, he's six foot one, so... Not, not the tallest. I mean, he's six foot. I think probably taller than all our other midfielders, though. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, that's what Villa, Villa are lacking that physicality. Um, I've said that time and time again this season. That uh, the James, James Tarkowski is another one. Centre back at Burnley. Villa have got an interest in him. So he's 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 six he's six foot plus as well. So look at the Man City players today. De Bruyne in the flesh. De Bruyne is massive. Rodri's a huge size. Um, so Villa needs Villa needs to add physicality next season for sure. Um, right, so I thought Chambers did well at the back tonight for me. Mings did okay and, and Luca Dean, but yeah, physicality next season that, that's a must. And Kamara, Kamara can bring that. Yeah, you, you asked me what I've seen of him. No live games at all. I've done what everyone else has probably done watch the YouTube highlights and think he's basically the next Zidane. He looks very good, uh, good on the ball. He looks like a combination of, of Douglas Louise's on the ball ability and Marvis and Cameron's best bits of defending rolled into one, but that is a YouTube uh, compilation. So yeah, our record with French midfielders or French league midfielders have been particularly great. So I kind of hold out, hold out the jury on that one just now. But looks better than what we've got, I would say. I know that Pat Pat Rowe has raved about him and, and the stats and the underlying numbers and stuff. Show he's a very good player and people that I kind of look at and respect online say he's good. So that's good enough for me. Um, Gerald's mentioned about free transfers and things kind of being close and, you know, we're kind of assuring fans we're going to be working hard to sort things out and, you know, we, we, that'll start from now, I think he said, or oh, it's already started, which kind of tells me we're, we're close to a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, Kamara probably won, Tarkovsky potentially the other. Uh, he played for Burnley today, who've been relegated. Another free transfer. So, you know, if you're looking at Gerald being here since November, October, was it, I think, and he's had... One January transfer window, the summer transfer window hasn't actually technically started yet. Um, and that's Dean, Coutinho, Kamara and Tarkovsky, potentially, you know, by the start of the So, a pretty good pulling power, isn't it, for a, a Premier League? You know, it's kind of first time in the Premier League as a manager. Yeah, 100%. So this, this, this will never happen on Dean Smith's remit. Dean Smith, sorry. Um, Dean Smith tend to sign young players with, with, with potential resale value. The, uh, the ball's trying to consider be here. Gerald wants ball winners through the door. Those who have been in Dunny want international players. Um, Kamara's a French international now. He's, he's joined up with Luca Dean next couple of weeks for the French squad as well. So he wants players with, with pedi- pl- plenty of pedigree. Um, we've played in Europe. and So, yeah, you'll see a drastic shift in the, in the transfer policy this summer, Dan. We'll sign a few, a few more older boys ahead as well to complement the group. And, and yeah, I think, I think going into next season, I know we've lost today, finished 14th, but it's one of them, isn't it, I mean? And Man City so close to that. I'm just looking at it now. I think it could have been something so different. We said that time again. Just 
Yeah. And another day, that stadium is silent at this point and it's Liverpool with the trophy. It's mad, isn't it? First of all, are you glad the season is over? Or are you kind of looking back on it going, it's another 38 game season done and work-wise as well, covering every single game? Are you happy or are you kind of sad? I'm spent, mate. Today's done me as well. I'm just like, I'm ready to keel over in a minute. Yeah, it's been, been relentless. Yeah, thanks for all the support this season from the, the readers and the viewers. It means a lot, mate. And um, yeah, I'm looking for a couple of yeah, a couple of weeks rest, yeah. Like you said, the players have six weeks off and they're back into it. So, fingers crossed to get down to Australia. I need to sort that with the expenses team. I'll get down there. <laughs> um, so, that'd be good to do that. And, um, yeah, new signings, new optimism. Gerard's first full season. Lots, lots to like, I think. And um, But, yeah, I'm ready for a little break. A uh, lot of games last, last few weeks, Dan. As in a few relentless, hasn't it? Um, yeah, a lot of podcasts, a lot of travelling. So I'm looking forward to a little break. But yeah, like I said, thanks for everyone who views, man, view, who comes in to views it and read all that stuff. It means a lot, man. It means the world. And yeah, privileged to be in this position. Yeah, it really does. Um, the last thing, and we'll, like I say, we're doing our pre, uh, pre-season, our end of season review. We're filming it on Wednesday. I mean, it's one of those ones that we're filming in person and it's like we could do a whole chat and then we sign a player on the Wednesday afternoon and it's all out of date. So we'll try and go through like as much of the season as we can. I wanted to ask you now on the spot and you'll probably get a chance to answer this again Wednesday. What do we need to add next season for it to be better than 14th? What are we lacking? What are we missing? I'd say a strong spine. Gerard's already said that, to be fair. I need a bigger, a better spine to the team. I'm thinking midfield, centre-backs. Uh, and yeah, I mean, striker, Dan, would you... Striker, for you? Got Ings and Watkins, Archer to come back. An experienced striker, maybe. Um, tough one. Um... There'll be lots of exits as well. All the lads on loan, that they'll probably move out. So it'll be uh, yeah, a totally, totally different look to the Villa uh, for the start of next season. What we need, yeah, I think we need some experience in there, some winners. Um, and yeah, I think we need a stronger spine to see out games like this today. Yeah, I wrote down three words. The right personnel in terms of transfers and, and building a you know, proper side of, uh, that Gerard wants. Deadwood getting rid of some of the people that aren't playing much and get you know put their wages elsewhere basically and mentality as well mentality is the one too yeah. flaky too soft not being able to grind out draws throwing away points like again don't want to get into it too much now but we're I think six points off 10th who, who are Wolves and they beat us twice so I've said all the time switch those six points around and it's up us up in 10th now what, what we've got six points off us as what well what we've got six of us we've again Man City are very good but we've thrown away three points a day like you can see that we're not a million miles away from yes. at least being top 10 with the squad we've got now I kind of feel like with shrewd improvements over the summer and kind of sorting out concentration the right mentality doesn't seem you know, impossible for Villa to be a top eight side, you know, minimum next year. There's kind of a tentative, hopeful um, request, please, Aston Villa. Can we at least be top eight? Um, so, yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll do our kind of proper end of season debrief in the week where we'll kind of get into everything in depth with, uh, I think, Pat and Matt are going to be there as well. We'll kind of have a point and a chat about, about the year just gone. But like we said, yeah, thank you very much for everyone watching. It's um, been very, very much appreciated. People jumping on these ones specifically, uh, kind of straight after games when it's all, all kind of fresh and raw. Likewise, yourself, Ash, from covering from covering Villa throughout um, all the various press boxes this season. It's been good to have you on, um, and Pat and Matt and James and everyone else who's contributed this season. And um, thanks to the fans who watch. Uh, like I said, we'll be back on Wednesday or Thursday with uh, the big end of season debrief. Um, it's been a pretty, pretty, pretty rubbish one, really, for the most part. But we've had some moments as well. Um, so yeah, Ash, I'll, I'll let you go. Enjoy the enjoy the the Etihad party that's still going on. <laughs> Get yourself back to Birmingham. Get me to Great Bar, sharpish. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, up the Villa. <laughs> <laughs>